I think there are lots of, there are many, many advances, and we are beginning to go through the process of uh, reviewing now. But for example, the large chunks of data that you want to analyze to understand the pattern within a public health uh, uh, you know, disease trend, for example, through the electronic me medical record review, that's one advancement that is already taking a good positive step. The other ones is large volumes of images being analyzed, and those, uh, those degree of uh, granular details that are necessary for a radiologist to look at it, that uh, often radiologists may not be able to see it, the computer can see it. So in a way, artificial intelligence will allow us to be more better than what we do, than what we have been doing in the past, whether it's an image analysis of a radiology image, or an MR, or a CAT scan, any of those things. And also for precision medicine, you know, ability for us to be able to develop new medicines, and understanding the human genome, and understanding where those intersections of human genomes are into the point where we need to study them, and then devise a particular medicine that will help a person who is uh, suffering from a particular genetic problem. These are all the advances. I think the, one of the key things is people have to trust uh, that the, the AI decision-making process is actually trustable. In other words, an algorithm that gives you a predictive uh, diagnosis ahead of the for a doctor who who will be diagnosing in the final state, uh, these algorithms need to be uh, need to be reviewed enough that the the person needs to accept the outcomes are actually something that the person can trust to and rely on. The second part I think is developing an AI algorithm itself demands quality data and structure data and the data for benchmarking and these data are very hard to come by and that's a big challenge you know then the third part I think is countries do not have right policies and uh, fr uh, you know uh, framework that have been developed well enough for AI to be uh, used under that particular framework so there needs to be tweaking of these policies and framework in the countries about use of data especially relevant to the AI so that is uh, something that I think we need to work on uh, that's another challenge of course getting the best minds to come together meaning that you know there's only shortage of human resources so we need to have a, a lot of human resources who have been trained into thinking about AI and AI data analytics big data analytics uh, machine learning and all of those ex expertise along with the medical and uh, diagnostics expertise that we need they all need to come together in a, in a group which is kind of a good example here in the focus group strategy behind this thing? Yeah, I think, you know, if you, if you say an algorithm is giving a, uh, a reliable result, let's say a, a, cat is, a cat is identified as a cat uh, or a dog is identified as a dog in a simplistic <laughs> sense, uh, and that means if a machine can identify that in, no, uh, in absolute 100% certainty, that's an example of an algorithm actually learning to identify. Now, if you think about an analogy of X number of conditions that a person has to which the doctor is using all of those multi variate conditions to diagnose, oh, you have a malaria, you have, a, uh, you have another particular disease, or you have a TB, those diagnoses has to, uh, has to be emulated in the AI algorithm, for which AI needs to learn the different ways of using the data to quantify and to arrive to a particular point of decision. So to me, you know, these two things are, AI has a long ways to go on certain solving certain problems. Uh, in other words, for simple problems by routing a, a, routing a traffic and averting a, a, an accident that may be a simple problem for AI, but the complex problem such as diagnosing a person's ailment or a physical problem is quite complex challenge, even for physicians. So the AI algorithms has a, has a way to go. And I think this particular focus group, in a way, is identifying uh, certain topical areas to which we know the benchmark data being correct. Uh, to which uh, we are going to validate these algorithms to see we, how the performance is. And we are going to rate those uh, algorithms for the performance that it is uh, conducting because we know the, the quote-unquote uh, undisclosed data sets is actually good data and that it, using that data you can get a 100% reliable result. But not all the algorithms can pass that test and we need to do that process here. And that's one of the key things we're trying to do. And we have lots of experts here who will be able to identify uh, and expand this particular conversation. I think ultimately, you know, um, the level of confidence that ministries of health need to have 
in order for them to approve certain devices that has an AI algorithm embedded in it for which the caregiving environment like doctors and physicians and clinicians are going to use these AI embedded algorithms in the diagnostics devices as a 50% uh, you know, solution to their analysis, if you will. And I think that confidence had to be brought in uh, to, to bear. Uh, that means that this particular focus group need to be able to create a mechanism for benchmarking and identifying and ranking the reliability of these algorithms in relation to what it will do in a situation A, B, or C, or D. Thank you.